Welcome back, guys, for another math lesson. We're getting close to the end of our multiplication unit. And what we're working on today is multiplication with two digits by multiples of 10. So let's get started with question number one. So our first question says, when you multiply by 20, why is there a zero in the ones place of the product? And our answer is because 20, well, ah, that's not the one I want. Our answer is because 20 is a multiple of what? It's a multiple of 10. So the product, remember, what does product mean? Product means it's the answer to a multiplication problem. So the product will also be a multiple of 10 and have a 0 in the ones place. So let's head to number 2 now. It says, what simpler multiplication problem can help you find 38 times 70? Remember, when we say simpler, we were, we're looking for a problem that has less numbers because it's easier to multiply and work with. So remember, when we have anything that ends in a 0, we can get rid of that 0 and add it on after we solve it. So this is my simpler multiplication problem, 38 times 7. Let's head on to number 3 now. So remember, I can get rid of that 0. I can basically ignore these zeros, do my problem, and then add them back on at the end. So let's practice this. We have 2 times 2 is 4. And then I do 2 times 1. I'm doing those next place values, which is 24. So now let's head off to this one. We have 3 times 1 is 3. And then we have 2 times 3, which is 6. Number 27. I'm going to do 20, not number 27, number 5 is 27 times 60. So I'm going to put that 0 down because whenever I have a 0 in the 1's place, I'll have a 0 in my answer. And I do 6 times 7 is 42. So I put the 2 down, regroup that 4. Then I have 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. So our answer is 1,620. Our next one is 66 times 40. So again, I put that 0 down, and then I do 4 times 6 is 24, and I regroup that 2. Then we have 4 times 6 is 24, plus 2 is 26, for an answer of 2,640. Number 7. We have 3 times 2 is 6, and then we have 3 times 1 is 3, for 360. Number 8. 5 times 4 is 20, so I put the 0 down. Remember, the 20 does not go here. The 2 does not go here. It goes up top, so we can regroup it. And then we have 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, 1,200. Our next one, 2 times 3 is 6, followed by 2 times 3 is another 6, 660. 3 times 1 is 3 followed by 3 times 7 is 21. 18, or number 11 is 18 times 30, so I'm going to put the 30 underneath. And remember, if there's a 0 here, I have to put a 0 down here. It's so I can start writing my 10's place value, because there's nothing going to be in that 1's. So we have 3 times 8 is 24, so I put the 4 down, regroup that 2. 3 times 3, or 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5 for 540. Number 20, remember, 5 times 2 is the same as 2 times 5. Our commutative property multiplication means I can flip the order. So I'm going to put the 51 as my first number. So now I have 20 times 51, but I'm going to put a 0 in the 1's place value, and now I'm ready to start multiplying. 2 times 1 is 2. Regroup, 5 times 2 is 10, 1,200. Number 32, 32 times 30. Put a 0 in that 1's place value, and I now can do 3 times 2 is 6, followed by 3 times 3 is 9 for 960. Number 14, so I'm going to put that 40 as our second number, and put that 22 as the first. And this time, I'm going to do something a little bit different. 
What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to ignore the zero and I can put on at the end. We have four times two is eight. And then what do we have? Four times two is eight. And then we can't forget that zero. We have to put that zero back on. So let's put that zero back on. Our answer is 880. So we have those two ways. We can put it on at the end, or so we don't forget it, we can put it on at the very beginning. But we'll get the same answer. So now what do we have for this one? 24 times 40. I put the zero down, since I have a zero in the ones place value. And then I do 4 times 4 is 16, and I regroup. Then I do 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Number 16, 34 times 50. So I put a zero down, and now I'm ready to start multiplying. 5 times 4 is 20, so I put the zero, regroup the 2. 5 times 3 is 17, plus 2. I'm sorry, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Now our next one, we only have four more left. We're doing great, guys. 73 times 40. I put the zero down, and now I'm ready to start multiplying. 4 times 3 is 12. Regroup that one. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 1 is 29, 2,920. 88 times 30 for number 18. I put that 0 down because, remember, I have a 0 in that 1's place value. And then I can do 3 times 8 is 24 and regroup. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 is 26, 2,640. Now we have 52 times 10. So I'm going to put a zero down, and oh look, my basic math fact is one times 52. And remember, one times anything is always the same number. So I just really need to add a zero to that one. All right, 97 times 30. Put a zero down, since I have a zero in that one's place value. And now I have three times seven is 27, or 21. Regroup that 2. 3 times 9 is 27, plus 2 is 29, 2,910. So we have our process down. So now let's go to our solving the math word problems. So I have this issue right here. It says a roller coaster ride ran 50 times one afternoon. If all the rides were full, how many people rode the roller coaster that afternoon? Well, I don't see any other numbers there, so should I just give up? No, it means there's probably something else hidden somewhere on the page. And as I look, I see it's related to this text feature. It says there's eight rows of four people. Now, I have two ways I could do this. I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and count all of those people. But what's going to be faster and more accurate for mathematicians is if I recognize, hey, this is a multiplication problem. We have rows and columns. We have eight groups of four, which is eight times four. There's 32 people on the roller coaster at one time. So now I have 32 groups on the roller coaster, but they're going one time, then they go another time, and then another time. So what is that? That's repeated addition. So I need to do 32 times 50, because I have those equal groups. So just like we did before, I have a zero in the ones place value, so I'm gonna put a zero down. And then I can multiply. We have 5 times 2 is 10, so I regroup that one. Then we have 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, 1,600. Number 22 now. It says the roller coaster ran 30 times in the morning. If all the rides were full, how many rode in the morning? Well, here we have what? We have 30 times 32. And you want to know something? I could solve it, or I can go back and look and say, hey, hey, that was one of the problems I did right before. So I have that answer right up there. Now, there is one mistake that we have on here. And that mistake is I didn't follow all the directions. Because it doesn't just say solve the equation for number 21. It says write and solve an equation. So I need to put all this stuff together. I need to put this 32, how I got that 32, with the 50, and then what does it equal? So this is my equation. 8 times 4, because remember, that equals my 32, times 50. And what does that equal? Well, at first, we didn't know what it equals, 
So I'm going to just put p for people, that variable. And now we solved it, and we got p equals what? p equals 1,600. Now, if your equation, if you just put this instead, you left that variable out, and you just put 1,600, that would be okay for your equation as well. Number 23, Danica sold 285 items the first week and 374 items the second week. If each item costs $6, how much did Danica make in sales? Well, we have these two different things. We have 285 and we have 374. So what we need to do is we need to figure out the total amount that she sold. So this was that first week. This was the second week. So what's the total amount that she sold? Well, I have to add these two. So let's add them. We have 285 plus 374. So I'll get 9, 15, regroup. So she sold 659 items. Now what do we need to do with that? Well, we have 659, and they cost $6 each. So I have 659 groups of $6. And that is a multiplication problem. Now, you'll notice this is one, two, three digits. We've only done it with two digits. But I'm going to think it's probably going to be that same process. And not only that, but there's no zero here. So if there's no zero, do I add a zero in my answer? No. So this goes back actually to lesson from unit three on one digit by three and four digit numbers. So this is from unit three, but we still know how to do them. So we have six times nine is 54. So I write the four down, regroup the five. Then we have six times five is 30, plus five is 35. And I'm gonna write that three up from 35. And our last one is six times six is 36, plus three is 39. So how much did she make in sales? Wow, in two weeks, she made $3,954. 24 now. Each year, Logan School orders 100 rock kits. So I think that's going to be something important. Each kit contains 28 rocks. How many rocks are there in all the kits? Remember, there are two zeros when you multiply by the hundreds. So we have 28 times 100. We have 100 groups, and in each group, the size is 28. So what would that be? We have 100 times 28. Well, notice this is almost the exact same thing as what we've been working on. But there's two zeros instead of one. So what do you think we do? Well, what I think we do is we just get rid of those zeros, do our problem, and add them back on. So let's do that. I'm going to put those two zeros on, and then I have 1 times 28, which is 28. So how many rocks are there? There's 2,800, and I'm going to put my label on, rocks. Now let's head to our last one for us. Jared says it's easier to place a number with zero ones as the second factor rather than the first. Jasmine says it does not matter which order the factors are placed in the problem. So, hmm. Jared's saying it's easier if we do it this way. Jasmine is saying it doesn't matter which order we place those factors in. Now, what's our actual question here? We don't know, so we have to go to part A. So it says, write to explain why Jared might find it easier to place the zero with the ones as the second factor. So why is it better to put that second factor, the one with the zero, as the bottom number? So let's think about it. Jared's going to find it easier to place and I'm going to zoom in for us. And what's he placing as that second factor again? He's placing the number with the zero ones. As that second factor. And then our reasoning is that because, and now we're going to state why it's easier for them because he can just record the zero in the, pro in the product or in that answer and multiply the first factor which 
which in this case was 24, by the second factor without the 0. So we're basically taking one number away so it's smaller. For part B, explain why it doesn't matter which order the factors are placed. So why does it not matter which order the factors are placed, as Jasmine is saying? So let's check. Let me zoom in for us. So the commutative property multiplication And what does that say? Well, remember, we were saying it doesn't matter what order you multiply in. So that's our multiplication property. And it tells us the order doesn't matter. When multiplying. The product or the answer is the same. So remember, using a very basic example, 5 times 2, that's the same as 2 times 5. So remember, we're allowed to flip them and we get that same answer. Good luck on your practice, buddy, guys.